yes, I think there, there should be, everyone should be clear that there is a big need for fiscal spending, uh, that there is a big asymmetry in the, in the way that different countries have fiscal space. Uh, Italy and Spain are particularly hard hit, uh, and they don't have as much fiscal space as, let's say, Germany or France have. So the crucial issue is how to get money quickly to the member states that need it most. Um, and um, Eurobond, I think, is a very good way of doing that. The question is, how do you can increase speed? So if you issue, create a completely new instrument, that may take time. A different way is to say the ESM uses it, its existing instruments, its credit lines, and maybe creates a new credit line that's very similar to the enhanced conditions credit line. Every uh, member state um, applies for it, so everyone has access to it. And that could be done very quickly. Uh, it would be the equivalent of a euro bond. So it's issued by the ESM. The ECB could buy those ESM bonds, which uh, would make life a lot easier for the European Central Bank and would come to the same result. So I think there are different ways to get there. But the, the key issue is we need to do it fast. Countries like Italy need the money now, not in six months or 12 months' time. But the fundamental point remains, is Germany willing to extend its balance sheet to other countries in the Eurozone in this period of crisis? Because let's be frank about this, for the last 10 years, many of these peripheral economies have shown themselves unwilling to do the hard miles necessary to reform their economies and their banking systems. It's interesting that we are switching roles. Um, I mean, if you look at most countries in Europe, they have done quite hard and quite tough reforms. And they have been doing quite well. If you look at Spain, it has done very, very tough reforms and has been growing rapidly. So uh, the, uh, the argument countries haven't done their ne the necessary reforms is a bit of a myth. Um, but it, it, it may be that they haven't done enough. But the key point is, uh, we are not now in a position to argue. We are not in a position to argue have they done enough or not. And we call it moral hazard, right? So that's uh, a worry some people have. But this is really not the time to worry about uh, the wrong incentives. Now is really the need to give uh, countries, governments, the fiscal space they need to fight the crisis. Because the alternative is a much deeper crisis. And also for Germany, uh, Germany cannot be indifferent to what's happening uh, in Italy um, in terms of its economy. If the Italian economy is collapsing, if the Italian government gets into financing difficulties, this is also a problem for Germany. So, yes, you're right. There's a big worry about mutualization of debt here in Germany. But I think also the realization is sinking in. Uh, we don't really have a choice at the moment. Um, uh, Italy needs help. The other countries need help. Now the question should be, about how to do that quickly and most effectively. Sure, Marcel, and, and just feeding on Jeff's comments there as well. I understand at the moment Germany cannot be indifferent, but Germany has been impatient with other nations uh, and the way that they haven't been as frugal as Germany and have been perhaps more spendthrift. That is the accusation in some quarters in Germany. Europe is at a halfway house. We know this. It's at a fiscal halfway house. Does it go towards more integration on the back of this, on a fiscal front, or actually when the dust has settled on this crisis, and we hope it will be sooner rather than later, does Germany actually pull away and say enough is enough, we cannot have more fiscal integration, we cannot go that extra mile. This is this might well come out of the discussion at the moment, but um, people have to be, be aware, in particular in Germany, uh, what that means for the euro, the common currency. Uh, and this would be risking the euro, the common currency, because if you have a big country like Italy uh, becoming unable to finance public debt, um, this kind of w would challenge the euro. And, you know, Germany is pro-European fundamentally. It is pro-euro fundamentally. Uh, and we have to think about the alternatives and diff the different scenarios. And if uh, there is no willingness to support weaker countries at the moment most forcefully and a lot stronger, uh, then um, we have to be aware that this might well risk the euro. Uh, and lead to economic depression all over Europe, including in Germany. So the alternatives are quite clear on the table. And now there has been a tough decision. Um, do we want to the euro area to recover? Uh, do we want to reduce the risks? Uh, and that means, yes, uh, more funding, in particular for the weaker countries. And yes, more mutualization, directly or indirectly, however you do it via the ESM. Um, so these are the choices. And I think if push comes to shove, um, I 
hope and I'm convinced uh, that Germany understands uh, that they are willing to do what, it, what is necessary uh, to save the euro and to save the euro area. Hi, I'm Giovanna Bersecchi and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.